안녕하십니까. Today we are going to talk about AI, machine learning and deep learning. The reason why is because AI is everywhere in the news. AI, AI, AI. The government loves to put money on AI projects. Uh, AI 벤처 기업들도. Investors love to put money on machine learning powered companies. AI investment, AI joint venture. And everybody's talking about deep learning algorithms. We are going to define what is AI what is machine learning, what is deep learning. At the end, I'm going to tell you how a full stack programmer like me that doesn't like math and that doesn't really like calculus and all that can get started working with artificial intelligence and machine learning. AI, AI is divided in two categories, narrow AI and general AI. Hollywood and Netflix and all the movies are in general AI. General AI is machines that do everything that humans do and better, that can do a general purpose AI, that can do anything. So it can talk, it can learn to play games, it can communicate, it can make a judgment, it can just be exactly like a human. And that is general AI. Right now in the world, in the industry, we are in a narrow AI. Narrow AI are machines that can only do one thing and one thing very well where the focus of the machine is narrow. The applications are narrow. The machine can do one thing well and one thing only. An example of narrow AI would be, for example, the Facebook AI at finding out faces in photos. But that's it. This AI is not able to learn how to find out dogs in photos because it's narrow. It's, gen it's narrow AI. It can only do one thing well and one thing only. That's where we are right now. But now, we need to understand how we teach those AIs. Here is where machine learning comes. Machine learning is the way to accomplish AI. So how do machines learn? There are many categories of machine learning, but the most famous ones are two. Un unsupervised learning and supervised learning. Let's say that we are going to make an application that detects if a food is a hot dog or not a hot dog. If we did it in a supervised way, what we will do is that we will label what a hot dog is. Okay, a hot dog is a sausage. A hot dog is long. A hot dog has some sauce on top. A hot dog has, is between a bun. That is a label. We're going to label what a hot dog is. We're going to tell the machine what a hot dog is, all right? And then we're going to get millions of photos of any kind of food, we're going to put that into the machine and the machine, based in our labels, the machine is going to say, okay, this photo has 60% chance of being a hot dog. So the machine is not thinking, the machine is just telling us in a probability way with statistics and mathematics, it's just telling us this has 95% chance of being a hot dog based on the labels that the humans gave to the machine. One example of supervised machine learning will be, for example, a music recommendation system. The user, us, will label the songs that we like. So we will tell the machine, these are the songs that I enjoy, this is the kind of beat that I enjoy, this is the kind of artist that I like. Next time a new song comes, the machine now has labeled data into what is a song that Nicholas likes and then it will know if Nicholas has a 90% chance of liking this new song that's coming up. That is supervised learning. Humans label the data. Now, in unsupervised learning, the humans do not label the data. So for example, to do this hot dog app, what we are going to do is that we are going to give to the machine millions of photos of only hot dogs. We're going to give that to the machine. We're not gonna give the machine any labels, and we are going to let the machine by itself figure out a label that makes a hot dog. So we're not going to tell any description of a hot dog, we're just gonna give the machine a lot of hot dog photos and the machine will figure out by itself after a lot of time and a lot of processing power and a lot and a lot of data, all right? Now, of course, I know, this is just a very simple explanation. If you want this, if you like this topic, we can talk more about it in, super, in future videos. But now I need to move on to the last topic, which is deep 
learning. Deep learning is just a way to accomplish machine learning. Machine learning is a way to accomplish AI. Deep learning is called deep learning because it makes use of something called neural networks. Very smart scientists, very smart mathematicians and computer scientists and all that, they came up with this algorithm that works like a brain. You need a lot of data to train that and you need a lot of processing power because it's a very long and computer intensive process. But that's it. Deep learning is a way to accomplish machine learning. Machine learning is a way to accomplish AI, all right? Now, deep learning is being used by companies, for example, like Google or Google or Tesla, for example, because they can process and have massive amounts of data and they have massive amounts of money. So how does a full stack programmer come up and start working with machine learning and deep learning? Well, if you want to get started in machine learning, you have to learn Python. That is like the best way to get started. If you know Python, then you can move on and look into something called TensorFlow. Thankfully, you don't have to do all these things by yourself, manually. You don't have to create the neural networks by yourself. The community has already built tons and tons of things. The most popular framework for artificial intelligence is called TensorFlow. TensorFlow is on JavaScript and Python. So those two languages are super, super easy to get started with, and you can get started tomorrow if you wanted to. Also, there is this thing called Brain.js. On Brain.js, they already have neural networks, deep learning algorithms, activation functions, a shit ton of things ready done for you to work with deep learning and Node.js. So if you ask me, it's an amazing thing. Like I said, the community has already built so many things. So if you're scared of math, calculus and all that, you can go and start playing around with TensorFlow or with Brain.js, and that will just give you an introduction of what is machine learning without having to take care of all the math and the calculus. Python and JavaScript, those two languages, are gonna be big, 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 big on machine learning. I think Python already is, it's massive, and JavaScript is starting there because it's on the web. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Just keep in mind that this concept is for newbies and I'm not trying to be super correct and specific in all the things I say. So if you think actually that was wrong, just remember that I'm just trying to explain this into the, the easiest terms I can. Let me know what you think. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, share to your friends. And as always, don't forget to eat kimchi. Bye-bye.